Hi guys, it's Mark Zickrey, Mr. Sci-Fi, and I'm here at the wonderful Star Trek exhibit at the Skirball Center. There are treasures here, so I'm going to take you on a little quick tour of it, okay? Come along with me. Firstly, here's a real spacesuit from the Gemini mission, uh, one worn by Ed Edmund White, and uh, it has a f flag behind it that was flown on the Gemini mission. And then we get to these amazing costumes. The these are all originals from Star Trek The Next Generation, worn by Geordi LaForge, worn by Picard, worn by Troy. And this is the filming miniature of the Enterprise from Star Trek The Next Generation. And this is before they went to CG in the later seasons. They would build these incredibly detailed filming miniatures. And here's the timeline of Star Trek. And then we go over here and you can see casual wear. <laughs> it was so, sold commercially. And look at this. These are rifles and phasers and pads from Star Trek Next Generation. And over here, which has more meaning for me, is McCoy's medical tools from the original Star Trek. The hypo spray, and an original screen used tricorder. These are all used in the show. These aren't copies. This is a communicator from Wrath of Khan, a phaser from the original show. I have one of these. And, uh, and then you get to the amazing costume worn by Kirk, costume worn by McCoy. I had no idea that the, that the navigational console still existed. It's been restored. Look at that. It's phenomenal. Sulu and Chekhov used to sit there, as well as other crew members. And it's just gorgeous. And then we come around here to McCoy's uniform. And we can see... Here's the nav console again, closer. And just really cool. And McCoy's uniform. These are all originals. And then my friend Ted Sturgeon wrote A Muck Time, and that had uh, T'Pau, played by Celia Lovsky, who was Peter Laurie's wife. And she was terrific in that episode. And then here's Spock's father, played by the great Mark Leonard in uh, Journey to Babel. And as you can see, it's a gorgeous costume. All the original Star Trek costumes were designed by William Ware Ice. And Mark Leonard was terrific. He played a Romulan companion first season. And then he played Spock's father, Spock's father's second season in, in the movies. Uh, that episode, Journey to Babel, was written by uh, DC Fontana, the wonderful DC Fontana, who I knew for many, many years. And then over here is a Vulcan costume worn by Michael Burnham in uh, Star Trek Discovery. And then moving on, we get to... Uhura's costume. We just saw Michelle Nichols' farewell appearance at LA Comic Con, and this is Uhura's costume. These are mostly from the uh, collection of Paul Allen, the late Paul Allen, who collected this great, great stuff. And that's Uhura's earpiece. Look at that. And, but again, the, the, the costume design on Star Trek, every, just everything on it, the, 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 the Enterprise, everything was just so far ahead of its time. It was just great. These are um, operational panels and, and uh, screens from the original Star Trek. They would be backlit. And, and I was on the set of the Enterprise when I was 10, so I saw all this stuff in the original viewing of it. Really cool stuff. And then here's Spock's uniform. Really neat. One thing that's interesting about the Spock's uniform is that it has a higher neck. The black part of it is um, higher than Kirk's, if you can see, because it accentuated Leonard Nimoy's long neck, and it looked great. Uh, so then moving on, we get to the model of the Enterprise used in Trouble with Tribbles, and this was actually a store-bought AMT model kit that they tricked out to use in that episode because they wanted a, an Enterprise that was smaller than the model that they shot in the, in, the, in the close shots. And then, of course, this is Tribbles from that famous Troubles, Tribbles episode. Uh, Elaine went to college with David Gerald and read that script in the first draft. And <laughs> so she was very lucky. Now here we get to this Kirk's tunic from Mirror Mirror, which is the great Mirror Universe episode that was done on the original Star Trek. Uh, it was written by Jerome Bixby, who also wrote the short story It's a Good Life that Rod Serling based that terrific episode of The Twilight Zone on. Uh, this is the savage co duplicates of our main characters, and this was a wonderful variant uniform for that episode that really accentuated Kirk's physique. And then we move on to this stuff, which is DePaul's uniform in, in Enterprise. And 
with a phaser and a pad used on that show and a rifle used on that show. As the series continued, because Star Trek became a huge success, they could put more time and effort and detail and money into building these props. And then we get over here. Now, my favorite stuff is the stuff from the original series. This is the Gorn costume from the first season Star Trek episode, Arena. And the fun part about that was that it was uh, written by Gene L. Kuhn, who was a writer on the show, writer-producer on the show, and only after he'd written it and they'd shot it did he realize that he'd inadvertently ripped off a short story by Frederick Brown called Arena, a very famous science fiction short story. So he then c contacted Frederick Brown and said, we're thinking of doing this as an episode. Can we buy the rights? Not telling them that they'd already, you know, written the script, shot the episode. And fortunately, Frederick Brown sold them the rights and they were able to do it and they credited it as based on the short story by Frederick Brown. And then we go over here and there's shooting miniatures. This is the uh, Excelsior, Captain Sulu's ship. And uh, we utilized that in World Enough in Time, but we used a CG version that, uh, that our guys, that Ron Thornton uh, built for us, which was a gorgeous, gorgeous CG shot. In the later years of uh, Next Gen, and particularly DS9 and Voyager, they, they stopped using models and went, switched over to CG miniatures, or CG ships, I should say. This is the Klingon ship from uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture and later incarnations of Star Trek. A gorgeous, gorgeous model. Here's uh, a Klingon outfit from Star Trek Discovery. Here's Giorgio's outfit from Star Trek Discovery. I mean, whether or not you like Star Trek Discovery, the, the detailing and attention to detail and design on the costumes, the production design are really of a high quality. Then over here we get to a Romulan ship from Star Trek. What does it say here? It's from Star Trek Next Generation very nice design, but I personally prefer the Romulan ships, the Bird of Praise that we saw in the original Star Trek series, because they were so uh, unusual and different from anything that had gone before. Now we get it over the Klingons. These were, this is a Klingon uniform used in the Star Trek movies and in Star Trek the Next Generation and later, later um, Star Trek series. And I've never been a big one for the Klingons, frankly, but here's the original Klingon ship from uh, the original Star Trek, and it's a wonderful, wonderful model. I built this model kit when I was a kid, but this is the original uh, and a very elegant design. Uh, these are Klingon blasters from various incarnations of Star Trek, Klingon knives, and then we continue on. And here we have Khan's uniform from Star Trek II, the Wrath of Khan, one of the greatest costumes ever designed by anybody. And it's just gorgeous, worn by Carl Montalban, and often people would wonder if that was his real chest in the movie. It was. He was very athletic, but it doesn't look real, but <laughs> it was. And uh, Wrath of Khan is one of my favorite movies, and Carl Montalban was terrific. I've interviewed Nick Meyer about directing that film. If you go on elsewhere in Mr. Sci-Fi, you can find that interview. And then this is a concept sketch of Khan's outfit and robes, really pretty, and communicators and phasers from both the Wrath of Khan and then Star Trek uh, Into Darkness, and that's uh, Benedict Cumberbatch's outfit from that. And there's Mr. Cumberbatch himself playing Khan, but of course most of us feel that he wasn't Khan, that that was pitiful, that it was always and will be Ricardo of Montalban. And then here's a Klingon mask and other Klingon accoutrements used in various Star Trek productions. Uh, Star Trek Generations, Star Trek The Undiscovered Country, etc. Then we continue on, and this is a super cool thing. Star Trek The Motion Picture, storyboards, designs of V'ger, and best of all, part of Spock's spacesuit and helmet from that film, where he goes for his little space journey into the heart of V'ger. And you can see, I mean, it's fun when you see this stuff, because on film it looks so great. And then you often, when you look at it closely, it's just kind of, you know, resin and it's kind of patched together and, you know, rough around the edges. But again, on, on film, it's just spectacular. Well, let's see what, they also have a transporter, uh, which, you know, attendees can transport up and down to planets and so forth and have adventures. Now, often people think that this transporter material is ridged, but actually it's flat. It's a lenticular material, like 3D postcards. When I was on the set of Star Trek when I was a kid, uh, I got to see that and I actually, and stood on the, the real transporter pad and saw that it was just a um, light bulb screwed in above it. 
and uh, I got to uh, have a piece of that lenticular material that is still in my collection at home. Now we get to Star Trek Voyager, and there's Jerry Ryan's uh, cat suit as Seven of Nine, and uh, Janeway's uniform and her command chair. One thing I should say about um, Seven of Nine, I've always liked Jerry Ryan. I thought she's a terrific actress and still is. I, I love her in Picard. She's one of the few things I love in Picard. But um, I was on set when they were shooting Voyager, and uh, I got to tell you that you know you would you would uh, swallow your gum when she uh, when she stretched and wearing that thing. It was pretty pretty amazing and uh, impressive <laughs> in all ways. Here's Data. This is the costume that Data wore in Star Trek: The Next Generation. Here's the painting he did of his cat. Here's a copy of his head, but not the original. And then over here is the Borg Cube, the infamous Borg Cube from Star Trek First Contact. Not the episode that I came up with, but the movie of that name. And then here are uh, rifles and phasers from, from that movie. It's a really good movie if you've never seen it. Here's a Borg uh, regeneration chamber. And here is, of course, a Borg. And this is, again, screen used in Star Trek and... Uh, in Star Trek First Contact, as is the, uh, the regeneration chamber. So this is really an amazing, amazing collection of items from Star Trek. And I've got a couple of gift shops selling Star Trek stuff, and I'll probably avail myself of that. But I'm so glad that fans have saved these items over all these decades, because, you know, we're talking over 55 years from the original Star Trek, and, and be, even beyond that for when the first pilot was shot in 1964. Speaking of which, here is... Uh, here's some pages from the Star Trek Writer's Guide and the, and the original script of The Cage. And if you look closely, it's Captain Winter. So it's even before Captain Pike. It's called Captain Winter. This is the first page of The Cage script by Gene Roddenberry. And, uh, and here's a great concept sketch of what the Enterprise Bridge was going to look like from 1964 before they built the, the final iteration of that great, great set. And, uh, and here we have Benjamin Sisko's costume. I remember when I came up with Far Beyond the Stars... Uh, you know, it was, I never was, I, it's funny, I was, I've been on the sets of, of DS9, but when I went there for when they were shooting Far Beyond the Stars, they were actually shooting in, back in the 1950s with all the characters dressed as writers of the 1950s and so forth. And so <laughs> my photo with that cast is very, it looks like I'm with a bunch of boring guys in, a, in an office when it's really one of the great Star Trek episodes of all time. And, uh, and I, but I do have many photos of myself with Armin Shimmerman in his quark, what he used to call his, his Ferengi drag, dressed as quark, and uh, that was really great fun. I've always loved the design aesthetic on Star Trek. And uh, so this is the exhibit. It's uh, absolutely wonderful, and I'm glad that I could take a short little tour of it with you. It's uh, really phenomenal, and I'm so glad to not just have grown up and been influenced by Star Trek, but now to be part of the Star Trek universe in such wonderful ways. So there you go. Talk to you soon, guys.